We just got a massive DMZ blog post. I think this is the most amount of DMZ information we've ever got at one time. They're talking about a new faction, new bosses, new case rewards, and so much more. As always, we're going to be covering everything this in a rapid style format. That way you can quickly watch this video and get right back into game with no wasted time. If you're new here and want to see more videos like this, make sure to unlock that subscribe button. So jumping into it. As we look ahead to season two, we want to share some more details on what is coming within our growing DMZ ecosystem and how we plan to continue evolving the experience. New locations, Ashika Island. The new Ashika Island map is coming to Warzone 2 is a brand new exclusion zone for DMZ. Players will infiltrate on the shores of the island before making their way inland. So in Almazra with DMZ, you can spawn all over the map. Sometimes it could be in the middle. It could be pretty much anywhere. But they're saying right here that players are going to infiltrate on the shore. So all the spawn points are going to be on the shore of the island. So you're going to kind of move in together as a bunch of different squads and kind of meet and fight in the middle. Infiltration is under heavy fog that can impact combat by providing cover for both operators and the occupying shadow company. But what could they be doing here? So it sounds like there's going to be fog as you spawn in around the island. This could probably be to stop people from spawn killing other people on Almazra, even though it's a big map there's quite a few spawn points where you can pretty much see enemy teams right off the get-go so it sounds like they're going to try to use fog to stop these spawn kills and other stuff like that from happening right off the get-go there's much to discover in the new map including a new weapons case we already kind of figured that so far every new map we've got in dmz has came with a weapons case Almazra had one building 21 had one so once again ashika island's also going to have one Hopefully it comes with seven different rewards. I hope we get an operator skin. On Almazra, we got the chemist skin for getting all seven cases. On building 21, we only got six items. There was no operator skin for that. So since this is a big scale map, I really hope that if you get the weapons case seven times, you get a cool operator skin to show for it because I love using that chemist skin. So yes, there's going to be a new stronghold boss, this one being the bomb maker. This is probably what's going to drop the weapon case if I had a guess, but hopefully it drops something else that's cool and unique. In building 21, you get the grenade launcher for taking down Velikin, and that's the only way to get this in DMZ. So I'm hoping they make the bomb maker have some pretty good rewards, and this sounds like a pretty hardcore fight. It sounds like just getting to him is going to have a lot of claymores and a bunch of other stuff, but uh, I guess only time's going to tell with that. New locked and dangerous spaces to access and explore. So just like Almazra and Building 21, there's going to be locked spaces you're going to have to get keys to open up and probably have some decent rewards behind. Now for some Building 21 changes, they start off by saying that yes, Building 21 is going to be returning in Season 2, but then they tell you all the ways you're going to be able to get these key cards. Samsite crates, chopper boss crates, buy stations, legendary orange crates. Before Season 2, we were able to get key cards via all these methods except buy stations. So now if you're looking to go into building 21 and you have a bunch of cash and either Al Mazra or the new map, look at buy stations. There's a chance that a building 21 key card are going to be able to spawn in these now, which wasn't prior to this update. Besides this, they don't really say anything else about building 21. Right now, you can use a key card for building 21 unlimited time. So once you get one, you can keep going back and back and back. I didn't think that was intentional, but they didn't say anything about changing that in this. And yes, it does appear that Building 21 is still going to be a limited time mode where you're only going to be able to play it a few days out of the week. Next, we have Almazra changes. There are new developments to explore in Almazra as well. We've updated Intel, including the crash of an unknown aircraft at the cave complex. The fight between White Lotus and Legion rages on. Perhaps operators can take advantage of this inner faction amnesty. So it sounds like there might actually be AI fighting each other in this area. But regardless, they're actually going to be adding new stuff for us to do in Almazra as well, which I'm super excited for. Refresh and reset. Here they fully explain everything that's going on with the reset. Contraband weapon inventories will be rolled back to the starting weapons. Key inventories will be emptied. Faction mission and mission progress will be reset to make room for an updated mission set that incorporates all maps. Then they also confirmed this last week. Ensured weapon slots unlocked through previous faction mission progress will not be reset. Yes, you heard that right. They are no longer resetting the ensured weapon slots. Originally, they planned to reset these with season two, but because of backlash, it looks like they've kind of walked this back. So if you have three ensured weapon slots when season two starts, you'll still have all three of those. If you have two ensured weapon slots when season three starts, you'll still have both of those. So if you're pretty close to getting your second or third ensured slot, you might want to go ahead and finish that off. That way, when season two starts, you have these at your disposal they also talk about how they've rebalanced the missions to make getting these insured slots easier so if you weren't able to get these in season one season two is going to make it a lot easier to get those additional insured slots they've also confirmed all of the cosmetics you've unlocked in dmz will not be getting reset so if you've done faction missions
that have unlocked operator skins, calling cards, weapon blueprints. Those are going to stay. Same thing. If you've gone into Almazra, got the weapons case and X filled with that, got the, you know, the chemist skin, you got the RPK blueprint. Those will still be on your account. Those are not getting reset. What they didn't say is if they plan on changing any of these rewards. Right now, if you've done all of the faction missions and got all of those cosmetic rewards, there's a chance when season two hits and they reset all the missions, you're going to be unlocking those same cosmetic items a second time. So who knows? Maybe they're going to make new stuff for the missions or maybe they're going to be using the same exact rewards that we got for season one. Then they talk about why they're resetting DMZ. Essentially, the missions got too difficult too quickly, but I still hope the missions are pretty difficult. To me, that's the funnest part of DMZ. And yeah, the tier five missions are pretty ridiculous, but it's very rewarding once you complete them. The only missions that I do think need a rework are the collector missions. I don't like getting 26 different blow torches or X filling with 100 radiation blockers. That's not really hard. It's just a small repetitive task over and over. So hopefully the collector missions get nerfed a little bit, but I still want the tier five missions to be painfully hard. When you get that, I want that sigh of awe. Oh, we finally got that over with. They're updating the key stash. The key stash will now be able to hold specific mission items that you must gather from one map and bring to another. This allows us to have longer form missions that utilize all of the maps. So there could be a mission now where it's like go into Almazra, collect this, you know, named Golden Skull. Then you can take that Golden Skull and you're going to be able to hold it in this mission spot in your key stash. You're going to be able to bring it with you and bring it onto the brand new map. And you're going to have to do something on the new map with that item. Those are the types of missions they want to implement. And that sounds really cool. It does sound stressful though, because imagine you go through all the work to get that key item. Then you're on the new map and then you die with it. Now you got to go back into Al Mazra to get that item again so you can then take it back onto the new island map. For this reset, DMZ may have to go offline a few hours ahead of the launch of Season 2, so don't be surprised the day before Season 2 drops if DMZ is unplayable. So don't wait for the last minute to get that last insured slot or that last cosmetic you're trying to grind. Next, we're going to be getting a new faction with new faction missions next season. This faction is going to be called Crown. You can see their icon right there. It kind of reminds me of an acorn. This British group is shrouded in mystery, but they've certainly piqued the interest of Black Mouse. There is a catch with this though. The only way you're going to be able to access this faction and do these missions is if you own the full game of Modern Warfare 2. If you're a free-to-play player and you don't own Modern Warfare 2, you're just playing DMZ and Warzone 2 because that's free, you're not going to be able to do any of these missions. They're rebalancing the enemy AI next season. We've introduced a number of balance changes to adjust the types of AI spawning, the number of AI spawning, and the accuracy of AI at range, and much more. So hopefully next season, there's not going to be areas with just millions and millions of bots, and they shouldn't be able to snipe you from forever far away, is what this sounds like. But they're also saying, we can assure you that the AI combatants in DMZ are still not to be taken lightly. So they're still going to be difficult to deal with, but they're not going to be just blatantly annoying anymore. At least hopefully. They've also updated spawn points. Starting at a point which your squad feels isolated or without loot and contract opportunities is not the best experience. These tweaks should improve spawn points across the map. In addition to moving spawn points, we've also made changes to Xville, boss, and dead drop locations across Almazra. So it sounds like there's going to be new boss spawn locations. There might be new and some removed dead drop locations and Xville locations. So a lot of different POIs and different things in Almazra might be changed up with season two. Next, they talk about mission difficulty tuning. This is pretty much the same stuff they said earlier in the blog post, so we're going to skip it. Crashes. We know crashes are especially impactful in DMZ if you lose your items and contraband weapons as a result. Addressing these crashes is a priority for season two, and we're committed to increasing stability. They've said this once before. I'm not sure why they don't add some sort of rejoin feature into DMZ. Many other extraction shooters and battle royale games have this feature, even COD Mobile. COD Mobile's had this feature for years, and I know people are like, oh, it could be abused. There's many simple ways you can make it so a rejoin feature is not abused. It works perfectly fine in COD Mobile, and it can't be abused like people think it would be. So I feel like the easiest solution, if you're not able to fix all the crashes and you're not able to you know, make it where people aren't getting disconnected, aren't getting dev errors and aren't crashing, add a simple rejoin feature. As soon as you crash, you're able to reboot your game and join back in exactly where you're at before you ended up crashing. Then they talk about the future of DMZ. There's not a lot to take away here except for this. We do not intend to apply a mission refresh every season. Instead, we're excited to try different approaches each season to continually improve the DMZ experience. More to come on this in the future. So they don't plan on resetting the missions every single season like they did for season two. They might only do it every time there's a new map or they might never reset it again. 
They didn't say if they plan to reset the contraband and key stash. The way they worded this makes it seem like they're still planning. Every single season, all of your contraband weapons and your contraband key stashes are going to get reset. I don't personally see the point of this. I understand why other games like Tarkov reset and they reset all of the stuff you have, but there's not an economy in DMZ. The reason you reset and you kind of wipe everyone's inventory is to balance an economy and DMZ doesn't have an economy but with that that is everything in this blog post out of all this stuff all the different tuning stuff the new map the new bosses the new weapon cases the new faction let me know what you're most excited about and if you want to keep fully up to date with anything changing in modern warfare 2 in a rapid style format make sure to unlock the subscribe button on this channel if you love to like or comment I appreciate it i'll see you guys in the next one peace